Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex, and let's watch Daniel as he struggles. I'm not struggling. It's struggling. Just, it lost the little thread this that lets you keep tearing it horrible in the same direction and dad jokes eventually peel that. off the whole thing. Can you get it? Do you know? Do you need help? I I'm, can help I'm the you. one with a knife over here. Uh, yeah. All right. You, you, this is a gift. You need a lot more than that. This is a <laughs> this is a gift from Charles Stella. Oh, wait. Where's your mini? I want to get a new one. Oh, okay. Charles Stella, you magnificent bastard. Uh, this mini. Broad That's a sample from Broderick Bay. Oh, the That's Aaron a sample Malt. from Aaron, yeah. The Aaron Malt, the Explorers series, volume one. 20 years! Mm -hmm. wow. wow, okay. Okay, this is an interesting one. This is Dream of Scotland. I actually really like the graphic on here, oh. even though the sticker is coming apart. 55.7% alcohol, cask okay. strength. Sherry cask single malt from Scotland. Now this is a German company called, uh, was it uh, Brewler Whiskey House? With Brewler Whiskey House, something like that. Anyway, remember the whiskey we tried that was a product of Michael uh, Couver, who um, was involved in the wine industry and then came over into the oh, whiskey industry and s hand selected and we got and this- we were, we were impressed, it was really good. Got this beautiful yeah. independent bottle that just tasted magnificent. And we really fell in love with it. And I don't remember where it is now. It's probably in the locked cabinet. So anyway, I think he's connected to these people, but it's a whiskey shop mm -hmm. in Germany okay. who does independent bottlings of Scottish whiskey, among other things. Right on. So they've sourced this yes. or independent bottled it. Right. And it's just an Isla. We don't know which one. No, on the nose, this, the note, the very specific note, the granular note, I went through like every, every flavor and smell known to man. And this is the distinct note I came up with. Okay. This re it reminds me of why I like scotch. Really? Yeah. There's so many things I like about scotch going on. There's some character, and then you, know, then you get all the way to like this, almost like a pickly. Element. Oh, yeah. I, and I like that. Like dill. Because scotch, has, it still can surprise me. And it's actually one of the reasons why I like scotch. To this day. It's I'm, not dill, though. It's like bread and butter pickle. Yeah, you got the pickle. It's like the too. sweet pickle. See, you were you were you were taking it. You were a little nervous of the of the, of the note. Right? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I don't know if I like this. I like it because I'm getting some classic uh, classic Scotchy goodness. It's a and twinge of vinegar. Just uh, yeah, ooh. it's just a twinge of vinegar. You know what it makes me wonder? And it, it's not overbearing though. It's not overwhelming. It makes me wonder if the sherry barrel they used had like some funk, like leftover sherry that had I, turned vinegary. I, I, no, it's got it's got to be coming from the peat. Is coming from the peat. You think? Yes. This is an Woo! angle, an angle on peat. I don't know. Whoa! Oh, man. Holy Mom. crap! Oh, that might be one of the smokiest whiskeys I've ever tried. Beautiful. It's beautiful. I think the holy. Peat smoke, I think the peat smoke had such a salty, briny core. Yeah. What it's presenting is like this pickle layer on the Dude, nose. that is more than any Octomore I've ever tried in my life. That is the ashiest, campfire, smokiest. You're getting ashy? Yeah. Actually, I'm getting something a much more like a salty, briny, almost. No, I'm also getting salt and brine, but I don't think it's coming from the peat. Wow. I think it's coming from the sherry. <laughs> wow. Yes. That is Jeez. the oiliness too, man. Yeah, for days. I mean, I would take another sip. I still haven't finished the first. <laughs> it's still going. Yeah. Oh man, what a struggle. No, kind of struggle. Mm. This, is, this is a delightful spanking. Yeah, this is, oh, 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 wah, Darn <laughs> Hang on. You know what this reminds me of? Mm. When you accidentally put too much wasabi on a piece of sushi and you just gotta ride the wave out. Yeah. And you know it's gonna end pretty quickly. Right. It's not like peppers. Right. Right? So it's just gonna go whoa, straight through your sinus cavity wow. and like burn your eyes a little. And then you go like, woo! That's what it feels like. It it's does. This. It, all the flavors crank to 11. Wow! It doesn't feel like it switches it up over time. Some things, the first sip and then it evolves to something else and then it finishes, it finishes into something else. I'm not getting that. I don't know what this is. It's just like. It's aggressive. Here's your sip. You got those flavors? Cool, hold on. Crank it to yeah. 11, and then slowly, slowly it starts to drift. I feel like now. this is a whiskey that like checks your safety harness on the, on the roller coaster before it says, 
go! And then some freckled kid goes, bing, and hits a green button. This is a whiskey. This thing takes off. It feels like there needs to be a waiver involved. <laughs> yeah. Point. Wow. Uh, hey. Jeez. You know what? Maybe we pull this out for the tribe shit we do later. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's we, relevant. We added our own to the list. Yeah. By the way, you, you realize that in the last episode, I didn't wear the medallion at all? Because I forgot. I, it was sitting right here, and I forgot to put it on. I don't look at you. I sell do you want me to look at you? So I guess my opinions aren't valid when I'm not wearing the medallion. Hold on, I'm looking at you. I'm assessing the situation. Yeah. Give me a little spin. Give me a little twelve. Ooh, on a six. Give me a little, little sachet. Mm. This shows what, <laughs> shows what we're working with here. Yeah. Wait. No, there's somebody in the comment who's like, but back when we were standing facing each other, behind each other. Yeah. He's like, I don't like this view. I'm spending entirely too much time accidentally looking at Daniel's ass. Oh, at Daniel's ass? Yeah. <laughs> Were you, wait. Not what, Rex's. Was your ass even in the shot? Oh yeah, I'm from your angle. Really? Yeah, I had an ass shot in there. See, I never once, once looked at your ass. You're missing Every out. Every time mine came up though. It's delightful. <laughs> Every time mine came up. Uh, you know on, on uh, YouTube you can change the watch speed. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did like half speed. Mm. Yeah. Like, you wanted to double the length of the videos? Saver. Oh, Just yeah. <laughs> There's a whiskey in here somewhere. All right. <laughs> Do we know what distillery they ended no. up bottling? I couldn't find out anything because yeah. all of the research was on the website. There's nothing on the website, really. Right. And everything else was in German, so I was counting on... Uh, Google Translate, and I do have some German friends I could have sent it to, but I didn't have, we didn't have time for them to respond. You know what? I get this, this flash before it cranks all the way up. This flash of a heather note, right at that very first moment of sip. Get some heather, then yeah, maybe. Oh, that's that's. It's good, but you gotta. Wow. Be, you gotta be prepared. This is to smoky whiskey what Stag Jr. is to bourbon. Yes, yeah, But not there. as sweet. Uh, D. Wallace, when you guys were discussing neck pour and battles evolving over time, mm -hmm. aging, and, oh, bottles. And bottles evolving over time, aging, and mixing times were mentioned. The thought that brought up a thought on those lines. If a distillery ages all their barrels five years and then mixes and rebarrels their mixed whiskey for another five years, can they then bottle the whiskey as a 10 year whiskey? In Scotland you can, and in Ireland you can. And the US. And it, well, they just passed a new rule that allows any what? time spent in barrel to count towards an age statement. Hold on. As so, in like a couple weeks ago. So finishing counts. Yeah, oh. counts as towards the age statement. Whoa. As long as your, um, your type is correct, right? So if you move it into a used cask, it's not bourbon anymore. Right. Right, so as long as your type is correct, sure. it still counts towards aging. Interesting. Oh. Because it used to be that if you moved it into a finishing cask, you had to stop the clock yeah, on which is annoying. aging. Because if you finish that thing for like six months, mm -hmm. that's meaningful time. Yeah, you could take it from a six year to a seven year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Uh, this was Dimmon 77. Is there a relationship between how fancy a bottle is and how ordinary the whiskey is? Yeah. Seems to be. If some, t well, I've seen both. I mean, the Gallon M has a fancy bottle, yeah. and it's expensive and fancy whiskey. Yeah. But I've seen some whiskeys that were just nothing but the bottle. They spent all of their money on the bottle design, and uh, it works. It Let me tell you, does a large percent of the population. Right walks down an aisle, looks for something to catch their eye, grabs it and leaves. Yeah. Uh, just like a lot of wine drinkers buy all based on the label on the wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think there's also a lot of distilleries, especially in Scotland, that have just been grandfathered in. They are iconic in the world of whiskey, that they have the most plain, plain the most simple, and anybody that... Well, I mean, look at these. These are rare special edition Signatory. whiskeys, and it's just text on a white background. Yeah. No, there's green in there. With some color. They got crazy with a green font at one point. Yeah, and the back is just like a generic. Yeah, yeah, could yeah. Have printed it off of and a. And they'll still blast through old yeah. bottles. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, to an extent. But if uh, we've seen, we've had both, like some beautiful bottles with beautiful whiskeys. I mean, Compass Box. Oh, right. They are known on. for bottle design. Yeah. And they dial in to just a, a, an exquisite level. Um, most of the bottles that I've had, most of them I really, really like. Or you get someone with true class, like Collingwood, 
who it designs like a, cologne a cologne bottle for you to drink whiskey out of. Uh, it uh, tastes surprisingly like cologne. Uh, does it? I don't remember that. Oh, no, it's, it's not my preferred whiskey, let's just say. Uh, all right, Daniel has opinions. I need a refresher on the Collingwood because I have no memory of it. No, you don't. I, <laughs> but I want it. That's called the grace of time, Rex, that you can't recall that whiskey. The grace of time. Just sands of time have washed that memory just, from your mind. Just lean into that senior moment. That's right. That's, that's a gift. Yeah, here's, that's one of the ones that gives. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us. Jesus, that whiskey. Hoffer, <laughs> <laughs>